I believe that black people are capable. I, I don't believe that black people are utterly dependent on the government or people of goodwill. I believe that black people are absolutely capable. I saw a pretty good interview and I thought, you know what, this merits some discussion. It's with Ben Shapiro, who is not a Christian, who is Jewish, who is conservative, that a lot of Christians wish were a Christian. I obviously wish he were a Christian because we just want more Christians. But uh, he's interviewing Dr. Vody Bakum, and he's talking really about just being a man, but, but they delve on some other topics as well. And so I want to deal with what's happening here. And, and, and listen, it's unfortunate that uh, one group is getting kind of lambasted for being the face of a lot of what's wrong in terms of criminality in America. But let's just call it what it is. We're going to be honest. We're going to be we're going to be serious. Now, is it just blacks who are especially young blacks who are involved in crime at this at this rate or that's growing? Well, Hispanics are involved to whites and, and all the numbers are growing are going up. But unfortunately, a population percentage of between 13 and 18 percent, depending upon who you ask, that is involved in so much crime and chaos, that just can't be. And there's a way to fix that. There is a way to fix that, but it's the it's whether we are willing to do so. I personally believe, this is me, that you do have to be a little bit heavy handed on certain things. Because if you are, then you immediately instill in the people at least a better chance of doing so that this sort of behavior or bad behavior will not be tolerated but if you give them a slap on the wrist especially as teenagers because what, what they're learning is that if you just treat them like kids and give them a second chance a third chance a fourth chance a fifth chance well then by the time he's committed his first murder we will have known that this kid has got a a, a five mile long rap sheet and we can't do that we when you see the kind of behavior and they don't care the reason why they don't care is because no one made them care. No one has made them feel any sort of punishment for it. When you look at this and you see you see what's happening, these are young kids. These are kids after they've been caught, still in cars, driving around. You see them being caught, and then they're in court, and then they have some friends show up. Chaos in court, the young defendants cursing and carrying on with little regard for the law. The teens charged with the crimes, not the only ones causing a ruckus. A Broward County courtroom. Now, this young lady, she feels like it's okay to go and just now, the, the, the lady that was there, the young girl, uh, she's a girl, is causing a chaos free so and I don't know who she said free, free so and so, and then she wants to dance and this and that or what have you. Well, okay, Missy. Tell you what we're going to do. You're getting handcuffed. Now, this is what I would do. This is just me. Because a judge should make a judgment call, and he should do so for the right reasons. In this case, you see this child is going down the wrong road. So what do you do? <sighs> Obviously, this is going to speak to, to parenting or lack thereof. Certainly a lack, a lack of respect for uh, authority. But then maybe even maybe even a lack of a father figure. I, you know, I don't know if, if her father's at home, if, if he is. Brother, if you are, you're not doing a good job. If you're not there, you certainly aren't doing a good, good enough job. Into a circus Tuesday. What was supposed to be a serious situation was met with laughing, smiling, kicking, cursing, and outbursts. Just one day after police say 14 suspects led them on a multi-city chase. Get that off me, motherfucker! The end result, more individuals being taken into custody. I don't get the camera though. Hush your mouth. I said it. At the hearing for 15-year-old Maurice Thomas, the suspected driver, and 15-year-old Thomas Butler, seen here smiling for our cameras, the pair seem to show up to show out in front of a judge. They're already accused of stealing cars and running from police. Also, the four suspects are wanted for crimes in Broward, Palm Beach, and Martin counties. <laughs> It started Monday evening when police say four teens stole this blue car at Lighthouse Point, then ditched it in Lauderdale Lakes, took off across this field and stole another car, police say. The suspects were caught, but the antics continued Tuesday in the courtroom when their friends were belligerent, then refused to leave. In the end, several more were arrested. So what do you do? I don't think that you can take it lightly because you know what the next step is. The next step one, they'll keep doing the same thing. You give them a night in jail. 
you give them a few days in jail or in juvenile, you give them a slap on the wrist. Well, that's not a big deal for them. That's, that's not a big deal. If the punishment doesn't cause you to retreat, well, then the punishment wasn't swift enough, wasn't strong enough. That's just, this is what it is. It used to be that you didn't need to give that much punishment for young kids. It used to be that way, but now, I don't have a problem with it with them being sent to a place that's overcrowded. If it's overcrowded, fine. You you, you caused it. You're adding to the overcrowded, and because it's miserable for you, well, maybe that'll be another reason for you to not do whatever it is that you did to go back. Because guys, it's not it's not a far stretch to see that these kids become a uh, a disaster for society. That it's not hard to see that these kids are involved in drugs, selling drugs, using drugs, uh, murder be on the scene, uh, all sorts of things. But you can stop it now. Unfortunately, the, the parents aren't doing so. And that's where we are. Now, Vody Bakum had his interview with, with Ben. Thought it was a good, I, I thought it was a good interview. And so let's just go ahead and delve into it because it relates to what we're talking about. You know, when Jesus, in one of his parables, um, talks about the par parable of the talents, right? And you have the owner who gives, you know, different talents to different workers, right? There's one, and then, you know, there's, there's two, and then there's five. He comes back, and one of them has done better with his talents than the others. Um, now, what he's talking about is this issue that we see where we're trying to make society kind of be fair. Not fair in, in uh, opportunity, but fair in output. So we want equal output instead of equal input. Listen, you have the right, you can choose to do this and that, but, but we should not determine that because you have failed or a particular segment of society isn't performing at the same level as another segment or the majority of population, well, then we need to fix that. Well, no, no, as a matter of fact. And so what he's talking about is that the fact that that's not even biblical and he's using the parable of the talents. We'll go to that passage just a little bit, but he's using the parable of the, of the talents to show that that's not how Christians ought to think. Chaos in court, the young defendant. Um, and he doesn't take from the one who did poorly or take from the one who did well and give to the one who did poorly. He actually takes away from the one who did poorly and gives it to the one who does well. I, I refer to that parable because it really flies in the face of the idea that the Christian attitude ought to be equal outcomes. Nothing could be further from the truth. When it, when it comes to... Now, let's go to that passage. Uh, this is in Matthew 25, 14. He says, For it is like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another he gave one, each according to his own ability. Notice that, according to his own ability. The one with one wasn't given five. Why? Because the one with one could not handle five. We're going to see that in a second. The one with two, you got what you could handle. The one with five, you deserve the most because you can handle the most. And he says, each according to his own ability. And when he went on his, he went on his journey, immediately the one who had received the five talents, you know the story, went and traded them and gained five more uh, in the same manner. The one who had two did the same thing. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And then we know the story he comes back. And he rewards the first two, one with the five, the one with the two, the one with the one who did absolutely nothing on what he was given. He didn't go and do like Bodhi was saying. He didn't take from the five and give to the one, no, or from the two and give to the one. He took from the one who had the least amount, who wasn't even good with that, and took that and gave to the one with the most. And so this idea of this equal distribution and so forth, well, that flies in the face of what the Bible's teaching. And so that's a problem. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad he's made that, that, that case. That was one of the things that when we used to have our financial seminars, one of the things we talked about, uh, there are some people who just can't handle enough. They haven't been taught to and don't really, honestly, sounds bad, but don't really deserve it. You don't, you don't have a, a right to wealth. You don't have a right to success. You don't have a right to be handed something because someone else has it doesn't mean that you're supposed to have it. The, the thing is, though, as long as you have the ability, the space to go and perform. And can I be honest, guys? If anyone says different, they're lying. Black people in America, Hispanic people in America, and white folks, we have the same opportunity. Is it equal? No. Some people live in California. Some people live in Iowa. Some people live in New Mexico. Some people live in Tennessee. Are the opportunities from state to state the same? No, they're not. But you have an opportunity nonetheless. Well, but my father wasn't there or we grew up poor. So what? 
So what? At some point in time, the excuses have to leave. If, if you haven't figured out, help is not on the way. There's no one coming to the rescue, whoever you are. If you are speaking uh, as a whole for black folks, help is on the way. If you're speaking as a whole for women, help is not on the way. If you're speaking for Hispanics, help is not on the way. If you're speaking for you poor, be you poor, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, help is not on the way. All the help that you're going to get, you have. And you don't need any more. All you need is, I've got a buddy of mine who, he was in the last live stream chat. I didn't say anything about it, but he is, he's doing his own business. And I don't, I don't, I don't mean to put his business out there. I uh, hope he forgives me. He's probably, he's probably on a plane now <laughs> going to see his fiance. But he told me that uh, he's, he's uh, working and he's got a pickup truck. He does, he, he does construction work. Um, it's his business. It's not a big business, but he's trying to grow. He's working a lot of hours. He's down in the Houston area. And you all know what kind of temperatures we have here in Texas. And he's working and his AC is out. But you know what he's doing? Working anyway. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this baby. I'm going to work as hard as I can to build something. That's what it's supposed to be. And I've seen black folks do it. I've seen white. I've seen Hispanic. I've seen a lot of people do it. But I've seen a lot of people who, who don't do it complain about not having because they didn't do what they needed to do, but complain because they don't have what they want. There's a problem because there's always somebody that's going to be there to pat them on the back and say, it's okay. I understand your plight. Let me help you. Redistribution, which is really what I think social justice yeah. is very into. Now, obviously, social justice has an individual component. There, there are people who believe that every individual should come out evenly, which essentially amounts to communism. But it seems like in yeah. today's day and age, it's more about group redistributive justice. It could be myriad reasons that we have those kinds of disparities, and not all of them are things that we need to do something about, right? Now, I want to deal with what, what he's talking about. Vody says that there's a lot of different reasons why, particularly black folks, don't have the same sort of level of success or the same amount of things that others. It's, there could be a myriad of reasons. But what do you think about that? Is, is slavery, is the stench of slavery, is the residue of Jim Crow and racism uh, in America? There, there was racism. There was institutional racism at some, at some point in time it was. Now, do I think that there is institutionalized racism now? I don't I don't think so. Do I think that there are racist people in America? Sure. Of course. Let's just put that on the table. There are racist people in America. There are racist people everywhere. There's racist people in your in your neighborhood. So what? So what? I can't think of the I can't think of the one thing that a racist person has done to to stop me from doing what I want to do. I I, I can't think now. Can a racist person be in a position to where they hinder what I'm doing? Sure. So can a, can a non-racist person, can a black person who's a jerk kind of get in my way, annoy me? Sure. Can't stop me though. Can, it, it can't stop me. What about a person who, who's blind and can't see what I look like? Can they? Yes. There's obstacles. There's all sorts of things. And so I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. I don't think that anything that I've ever gotten in my life, either good or bad, I could blame on anybody but myself going to school, getting a job, so forth. That was, that was me. Every, everything that I've done um, was me, even to the bad. That was me. Wasn't a white man that, that, that sent me to jail. That was all me. So I think that's a problem. But his point is there's a myriad of reasons. And personally, I kind of think that the last of those reasons, the least of those reasons, happens to be racism, particularly slavery. Yeah, but Corey, people didn't have... You, you don't have that legacy of people coming out uh, with land and so forth, families being able to leave. So, well, okay, fine, fine. You can make the point that uh, someone white may have had another wealthy white person to leave them some land or something like that. Or whatever. First of all, all white folks aren't wealthy and they don't have it to leave to everybody. Secondly, most money is new money. Most millionaires are new. They did, they're not legacy millionaires. In other words, they didn't. most millionaires did not inherit their money. So you can go out and you can do whatever it is. You can listen. I know guy. I know millionaires who were landscapers and built their. I know millionaires who have that. I've got a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine. Listen, guys, out of prison, does heated and air conditioning, um, made enough to where he can start doing his own thing, and now has his own business, and he travels a lot. He he he's got a he's got a bad jacket. In other words, prison, but he's also got a work ethic. And so he's making it. 
if I if I call him up now, hey, listen, send me five hundred, send me a thousand, before I even explain to him what I needed for, if whatever, it's in the account. What else you need? And we go to. He's done well for himself at, without complaining, and so whatever the whatever the reasons are, are they valid? Are any of them valid? That's the question. I mean, Austrians make great violins, right? I mean that that just. Thank God for that, right? We don't just say, hey, you guys, you know, stop making so many violins and we're going to make. No, we just say, hey, they're good at that. You know, most people are not as good at that as they are. Praise God for that. Let's go get violins from them. But this idea that somehow any kind of disparity among groups um, is, you know, just sort of a de facto injustice, that's hugely problematic. And, and how do you think that that's impacted, particularly black Americans? So the, the, this has obviously come up in the context of multiple groups, but most prominently in the United States, the, 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 the issue that the Biden administration has taken up is the idea that black Americans have been left behind by the system, and now we have to have systems that are put in place to redress this. You see? Okay, before we go, does, does when people, now he, Ben's not making that point, but when people say that they've been left behind by the system, that we've got to use a system to put in place things to kind of help them, do you, do you all agree? See, I believe this. When a person is so, so, and, and especially if they don't know you, but they're so benevolent and willing to help you, doesn't that usually mean that there's something coming with that? For example, if I say that you vote for me, I'll do this for you. If you, wait, wait a minute, you're going to give me this? You're going to give me, you're going to do that for me? What do I have, what do I have to give you in return? Uh, nothing, just your um, loyalty. Without a question. You got to give me your loyalty. No questions asked. Okay. No. Because we see what, what that's gotten us. But should the system be set up to do for people? That that That's the question that Ben is getting at, as well as, as well as, uh, Vote is going to address this as well. On, on a more specific level, in California, in, in Illinois, there are places that are actively talking now about, for example, slavery reparations uh, to make up for the injustices of the past. How, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of things. Number one, if there are individuals who've been put upon, if there's been injustice, then there should be legal redress for that injustice. Um, however, uh, my family, uh, you know, I have this nice, wholesome German name, right? Um, my family was were slaves. My family's been in America since, uh, as far as I can tell, around the early to, to mid 1700s. Uh, so if we were talking about, you know, at the end of slavery, saying and doing something at the end of slavery for those members of my family who experienced that, then I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all with you. But so if we could give something to the people that were immediately affected, in other words, to the slaves. But his point is, well, how do, how do we figure out who's been affected? Because everybody black that's here uh, doesn't have a lineage here in America. There are second, third, fourth, fifth generation blacks who uh, their parents came from some other part of the world, came from the Caribbean, came, well, but they were slaves there. Well, they weren't our slaves. Uh, there were some white, there are some white people whose families, who, who has a lineage of, of slavery, where they were slaves, but this person married that person, so forth, and so now through the ranks, well, now uh, they don't look black anymore. <laughs> uh, so what do you do? What about the people who are not from this country? That's the question. So how do you, how do you make this fit? How do you how do you figure this out? That's that's a that's a hard one. But then what about also the blacks who? Well, yeah, it wasn't a whole lot, but there were some blacks who owned slaves. Do 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 we have to go and now make them give restitution? Well, no, we're going to make the government do so. You wait a minute, the government that's already in debt. We're going to make the go okay, okay. But talking about that now. Um, I think it's inappropriate for a number of reasons. Number one, because how do we determine, you know, who and what those individuals are? But number two, there have been a lot of legal redresses over the years. I think thirdly... Hold on. Now, what he's talking about here, if I understand him correctly, he didn't go in, into detail on this, but where he's getting at is that you've had things like such as affirmative action and so forth. Uh, now, I've never thought that affirmative action was was ever the right way to go. I, I thought that even as a, I, I remember we used to have in our in our little social studies classes, civics classes growing up, we would talk about these things, and I was never, never a fan of it. It it, it made no sense then, uh, because when you go back and look at blacks, as you see blacks making their greatest gains, there was no affirmative action at the time. 
there was no affirmative action at the time. I got, I've, I've got to address this. I've got to address this. Patrick says that the police are the biggest gangs. Really, you think the police are the biggest gangs? Are there some problems with the police? Sure, because there are human beings inside the police forces, and so you're going to have some problems. But you think they're the biggest gangs? I don't. I, I, I would have to disagree. I think the biggest gangs are gangs. Listen, the first time, the second or third time that you have encounters with gangs, you recognize, first of all, when you get in the midst of a gang and they're, they've turned their attention on you, do you know who you want now? You want some police. You want some police. You want some blue love now at that moment. Now, all of a sudden, blue lives matter when the gangs are turned towards you. And they have been, they have, they are a blight on the community. They are destructive. They need to go. There's no if, ands, buts about it. Don't have a private, listen, if, if I wouldn't go to their hood and say it, but I'd say it, listen, you need to go. You need to do something with your life. So I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're the biggest gangs. Have there been some problems with police officers? Sure, but there have been problems with everybody else too. There are issues in the black community, for example, that we know contribute to some of the disparities. For example, when you have almost 75% of black children born out of wedlock, um, and, and, and we know that regardless of a person's ethnicity, um, there are consequences to that. There are consequences in terms of incarceration, in terms of dropout rates, in terms of drugs, alcohol, violence, you know, and all these sorts of things. Well, if we know that those things are there, my big problem with the social justice crowd is if everything goes back to social justice, then there are some things that ought to be addressed that don't get addressed. Because now, his point is about how, how we address it. But let me just, let me, speaking of addressing, let me address this person. This person, T-Bird, which you know is going to happen. You know it's going to happen. Somebody, Corey and Vody, you spelled Vody wrong, by the way, both sound like raccoons. So you call me a coon. That, listen, okay. First of all, do you know how ignorant you sound? <laughs> do you know how ignorant that, that, that's the reason why you can't get anywhere. Not the reason why I can't get anywhere. It's the reason why you can't get anywhere. So no, what what have I said that was wrong so far? And I, I don't know if you've been banned. I hope they, I hope they haven't banned you or whatever for the insult. But what did I say? What has been said thus far? That's wrong. By the way, I'm not sure how old you are. I know how I know how I know how young you sound. But what's the problem that that's been stated so far? Because this is what we used to say in the in the in the 80s, in the 70s, in the this in the 60s. Previously, this is how we used to believe as black folks. Someone coming around wanting to make an excuse for black folks. No, you got to go. I don't. I don't need you. Can you mean tell me if 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 a white man said, "Come here, boy," and he he's got to call you boy. You know why he's got to call you boy? Because a man is not looking for someone else to always help them. So he says, "Come here, boy. Let me help you out. Let me fill this application for you." Is that is that what you want? It's not what I want. If I'm in the competition with somebody, let's say I'm getting ready to race somebody, and they say, Let me, "I'm I'm so I'm so much better than you." I'm going to give you a head start. No, I don't want a head start. I don't want a head start at all. I want to, I want to race your head up. I want to beat you. I, I don't need you to give me any sort of advantage because the reason why you're giving me some sort of advantage, some sort of help, is because you look down on me and you think that I cannot do it unless you help me. What I need for you to do, Mr. Person, is to kindly move aside. I'm not asking you to move aside for my benefit. No, sir. No, sir. As they say in the South, no, sir. I'm asking you to move aside so you don't get ran over because I'm not stopping what I'm doing. If you are in the way of, of progress, then, sir, forgive me for these tire marks that I'm going to leave over you because I'm running over you if you are in the way. I don't need you to help me. You can't do anything for me. You can slow me down. Matter of fact, talking to you, sir, and you with the insult has caused us to deviate, but you need to be addressed because you, sir, or I don't know if you're a man or a woman, are part of the problem. You are literally part of the problem. You are literally the reason why, if you're black, if you're black, you are the reason why we've got failure rates in black society like we do. If you're white, well then, you just prove my point. But what was raccoon, what was coonish about that? Holding, holding holding black folks to a standard, expecting that black folks can do it? Really? No, sir, uh, can I, let's be honest. In Jesus' name, I'm just going to be honest with you. But if you're black, you you sound like you've sold us out. That's what it sounds like. It it really, and that's part of the problem. 
you and, and everyone else that wants to fix stuff up for you. Can I ask you a question? I'm wondering, do you do you have do you have a uh, do you have a license? Or is that that too difficult? Is that too racist to get? See, we're gonna keep having these problems, and folks are gonna keep saying these are the issues, but you never deal with it. You never deal with it, and so consequently, you'll sell that lie to your your children. You'll sell that lie to every, anyone else that will listen. And they don't make it anywhere. They can't do for themselves. And so you've got, so we, you help to create foster generation of young black people who don't know how to be independent. Because we blame the wrong cause. So how do you think that message has been received? One is that, that people feel actually empowered by that message because it suggests that they actually have more in their hands than they, than they thought they did. It's not sort of shadowy nefarious forces that are out to get them. Most yeah. of these decisions are actually things that you can do in your own personal life. There's no shadowy historic force that's forcing you to impregnate a girl and take off. Right. That is a decision that you actually have to make yourself and a decision that conversely you can avoid making. So some people seem energized by that. Other people seem enervated by that. Yeah. And it, they almost seem empowered by the message that society is discriminating against them. It gives them a sense of, of purpose. It, it gives them something to direct their opposition to. How, how do you think <laughs> the, the message is? So he's asking this little message about really how, what Bodhi is saying uh, and what most blacks used to say all the time, this issue of self-empowerment, like every other community in America does. Look at every other community in America that's thriving. They're looking to themselves, uh, either as a community or just by themselves, period. But there, there are those that this argument is, a, is bothersome um, because what they'd rather hear is the excuses and that somebody's got to come help. That's what they'd rather hear. It's infuriating them to hear that. You know, I usually get eye rolls and uh, here we go again with the victim blaming. Um, I usually get people who will um, accuse me of, you know, being out of touch. Um, of course, you know, here I am and obviously, you know, I don't know what it's like uh, to have some of those kind of disadvantages. Um, and those people obviously don't know me. By the way, Vody, like myself, from the hood. He was born in South Central Los Angeles. He's from he's from the hood, um, born to a teenage mother. So he knows what it, what it's like. I know what it's like. So it's it's almost like folks think that if you say something like this, that you you must have grew up on the right side of tracks. Well, no, no, no. If the right side of tracks is my side of town, then then yeah, I guess so. But no, uh, my side of town, my side of tracks. Had a whole lot of graffiti, had a whole lot of uh, litter and so forth, had a whole lot of crime and gangs. And so if that's what you mean by the right side of tracks, then I guess so. Who I am or, or where I'm from, because I very much know what it's like to have those kinds of disadvantages. Uh, but I don't worry about that. Uh, I don't worry about how people take that as much as I worry about uh, doing something about the problems that exist. I believe that black people are capable I, I don't believe that black people are utterly dependent on the government or people of goodwill. I believe that black people are absolutely capable. People who- now I'm gonna come back to that in a second, but let me just go to this. Because it's incumbent upon everybody in your own community to take care of your community, but it's also incumbent upon you to take care of and provide for your own family, for your own household. Let me just read this, because I think this applies. This is 1 Timothy 5, 8. He says that, but if anyone does not provide for his own, his own. Now, that can be locally or just kind of, you know, in close proximity. But he says, especially for those of his household, especially for those of his household, uh, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. He has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So if you are able-bodied, you've got the ability to go out and work. You got two feet, two hands, or you know what, one foot, one hand, but you can still get out and work then you are required to do so, especially if you name the name of Christ. We've got too many people that don't do so. You've got the ability to work and you're waiting on somebody to help you, to hand, hand it out to you, give you what you think you got coming. But meanwhile, you can go out and get it on your own. That's a problem. And that's what we're seeing happening by and large in many places in our community. There is no reason. And by the way, by the way, let me just say this also. Uh, the place that you live in, the community that you live in, if it's a lot of crime and drugs, you don't owe that community anything to keep it real and stay there. Don't don't leave. Don't forget where you came from. No. If, if it's bad, leave. If it's bad, leave. Get out of there. Go to some place where you can raise your children safely in a good environment where other folks have some sense. If the folks around you, be they black, white, or Hispanic, or don't care what they are, if they don't have any good sense, then leave. Leave. Amen?
But I want to play what he just said because I think that I think that needs to be stated. Um, accuse me of you know being out of touch. Um, of course, you know here I am, and obviously, you know I don't know what it's like uh, to have some of those kind of disadvantages. Um, and those people obviously don't know me, who I am, or, or where I'm from, because I very much know what it's like to have those kinds of disadvantages. Uh, but I don't worry about that. Uh, I don't worry about how people take that as much as I worry about uh, doing something about the problems that exist. I believe that black people are capable. I, I don't believe that black people are utterly dependent on the government or people of goodwill. I believe that black people are absolutely capable. Um, I was raised by a single black mother who was absolutely capable, who did everything that she could do to see to it that I had advantages that she didn't have. The vast majority of people who grow up in those circumstances don't end up at the same sort of conclusion that you do politically or with regard yeah. to values. So, so how now he's asking him how did he's gonna ask him how did you get to your, your conclusion? How did you develop this? And listen to what he says, how he came to his conclusion, how he looks at life. How did you end up with this set of values? If, you know, there was a long and winding road. Um, you know, when I was younger, I would have been more in the sort of black nationalist vein. Um, if you think about, you know, Martin Luther King and, and Malcolm X, I would have been more on the Malcolm X black power side. Um, but I came to faith late in life. Um, I, I never heard the gospel until I was in university. Um, I was raised by a single teenage Buddhist mother <laughs> in South Central Los Angeles. <laughs> Um, and so that was kind of my faith reference point. And, you know, I heard about Christ. I heard about Christianity. And I, I, I believed the gospel. I believed in, 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 in Christ as my Lord and, and Savior. And it changed my life. Well, amen. Amen. One, amen to what you're saying, too. Am I, am I the only one? It can't be me. And I think it needs to be said. Am I the only one that's just saying, voted? just go ahead and just get rid of that up top. Just go ahead and listen. Let go. Let God. That's beside the point, though. But what he said, absolutely. When you, it, it, It's hard to imagine a person being a Christian but feeling defeated like that. I question, I, I have to turn around and question your faith. I've got to question your faith if you claim to know the one true God, and you feel defeated. You claim to know the one true God who has your back, that he's more than the world against you, and you think, you think that the white man, the man, the government, you're they, they're going to stop you. You want to blame everything on everybody else, but still ne and never run to God. Now, don't run to God and just, woe is me, Lord. It, no, I, I, th that's the part, that's the, the disconnect that I have. If you are in Christ, one, you should have a work ethic because if you're reading your Bible, you can gain a lot of life, learn a lot of life lessons just by reading God's word. You really can. The book isn't just there just to, you know, put your coffee on it. it so... I think that's amazing that he said that. I'm glad he said that. I, I expected him to have said that, but those of us that are making excuses, can you say that? And slowly it began to change my worldview as well. Um, and then looking at the scriptures and being serious about what it meant to be a follower of Christ. Now there's a passage, I've, I've got to cover this passage. I got to cover this passage, uh, John 8. We always go to John 8, 36, but let's go to 35 first. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. And so if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. There are too many of you people, black folks, Hispanic folks, white folks, women, who talk about how much you're in bondage and you're just simply bonded, in bondage either spiritually or mentally. Because maybe you have not been set free. This is why I just I, I wonder about some people when they when I hear certain things coming out of their mouth. Like, what the, you, you mean tell me you, you know Jesus? You've had an encounter with the Lord, and this is your mentality? Blaming everything and everybody, you can't get ahead for whatever reason. Y'all 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 do realize, I don't know if y'all know this or not. But do you know that there were people that were oppressed that were um had presidential peace? prejudicial people that come at them 
um, in Jesus' day, they had slaves. Yep, they had they had a lot of legal prostitution. They had a lot of the same things that we have. They have disenfranchised people. They had a lot of poor people. Jesus even said, "The poor you shall have with you always." So he wasn't he wasn't uh, unaware of these things. And you know, Jesus, Jesus still didn't come and say, "You know what? Let me let me lead a campaign. Let me lead a march." No, no, because in Him you can be free. Now, obviously, we're speaking spiritually, but at the same time, if you're free spiritually, shouldn't your mind also be free too? And stop thinking about the same ways that other people who are in bondage into sin, uh, spiritually speaking. Should you think the same way they think? No, you should not. You just absolutely should not. And so slowly, um, that that began to change my worldview. And then, of course, you know, through my education and other things, and then through being a student of history, um, that just began to change my worldview as well. And becoming aware of, in some instances, you know, nefarious actors who benefit greatly from convincing black people and others that uh, our problems are from outside. Um, so again, it was a, it was a process. Um, part of that process was when I got old enough um, to find a little trouble, and this is before I even became a Christian, my mother shipped me out and got on a Greyhound bus for three days and went from Los Angeles, California to Beaufort, South Carolina, and lived for about a year with uh, her oldest brother, who was a retired drill instructor in the Marine Corps. <laughs> who had doing, he, he had done 22 years in the Marines, um, two tours in Vietnam, um, his first time having a man in the house, and it was a life-altering experience. He was a man's man. He was self-reliant, you know, taught me how to hunt and fish and, you know, everything else. So I want to address this. Sean, Sean Shell says, Corey, you are so simplistic in your analysis. Okay. How come people that think like me tend to do well? I'm not saying everybody, but tend to. So explain, help me understand how complex and complicated uh, this is. What, what, tell me, what am I missing? Tell me what am I, I'm just glossing over. Thank you, Davida, for the super sticker. I appreciate that. But, but tell me, tell me where I'm, where I'm wrong. Tell me, tell me where you're right. Tell me, tell me what we should be looking at. Tell me where we should find help. Tell me what we can do to fix this, where we don't have kids running in these stores and looting and so forth. Listen, it used to be, it, folks used to have a common decency to loot when there was a riot. Now they just go and just loot just because. You, yeah, you know what? It's three o'clock. We ain't gonna do. Let's just go ahead, all thirty of us, and go in and run. <laughs> so tell, tell us, tell us, tell me where where my thinking's off, where I'm wrong. Surely you, surely you have thought this through, and you have a you have a ready made response. Because I don't see anything wrong with what he said or what I'm saying. So I just need yes, the common decency to wait. <laughs> You're supposed to. You're supposed to at least wait till there's till it's nighttime and there's there's some fires burning. When there's there's a good riot going on. Now they don't need that. Let, let's go loot the place no matter what. So help help me out. I would love. I would love to hear. Someone says, Corey, can you please speak on the gang glamorization of the culture? We glamorize the wrong stuff. We do, and it's just it's. You, I tell you what. Turn. Who's the white artist? Who's the white now? The Hispanics. They have this problem too, but who's the white artist? Where you got the women twerking, where you got the guys, the men talking about selling drugs and shooting somebody and killing somebody and this and that, this this gang murder culture. Where? We don't we don't we don't see this like we in other in other groups like we see in our society in our, with with black folks. So tell me. I think I think what's happened is I think what has happened is there are some people who don't want to be who don't want to offend someone else. I think it's okay. Now I, I don't I don't have the key to tell white folks what to do, but white folks, I think you listen, don't feel ashamed to call it out for stupidity. I know there's some folks that want to make you feel bad because you call it out because they're doing listen, call it out. Call it out. If, if, if just because your friendly neighborhood um, black person going to call that don't mean that you can't call it out. They, let them call you Karen. Let them call whatever you want, they want to call you. But wrong is wrong. Yeah, gang culture is pretty bad in Mexico, but. 
they promised us 40 acres and a mule. We are we oh, we are owed a debt. Well, you know what? We we wouldn't be owed a debt if we weren't if we weren't sold in slavery in the first place, which was we were sold in slavery by other blacks. I'm not making light of, but man, let's just be honest. Uh, you're not getting that 40 acres. You're not you're not getting that. You're not getting any of those things. But you've got to be. Listen, you know what you have. You know what you have. This is what everybody black has. You've got an opportunity to go to school and get an education. You've got an opportunity to get a job. You can go to college. Now, sometimes college isn't worth it, but you got you got all these opportunities. I say go and take advantage of those opportunities. If you have exhausted all of your opportunities, and white folks have put their put their feet in your way at every turn, well, then you got then you got something to gripe about. I don't think we're going to see that. I don't think we're going to see that. I haven't seen it. I've seen I've seen white and black folks get in my way. Can I be honest with you? Is this thing on? Let me be honest with you. Which race do you think I've seen in my way most of the time? Come on, black folks in the chat. Is it? Is, have you had more problems out of the racist white man? Or have you had more problems out of the Folk that look like you. Come on, tell the truth. Shame the devil. <laughs> Let's be honest. Sometimes we get in our own way, and sometimes we have that mentality because if they see you trying to do well, other folks, they get bothered. Now, there's haters in every group. You got white haters, you got black haters, you got Hispanic haters, you got haters that are friends of yours. You might want to get some new friends. If I got friends, if I have friends, who talk negatively about what I'm doing? You're not my friend. You got to go. Bye. I'll th uh, hey, listen. I, I I gotta I gotta take care of some. I'll talk with you later. I can't I can't I can't deal with it. One thing that I just absolutely loathe is a negative spirit. I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. I told him. <laughs> you have to be careful when you say this. And now you'll hear this a lot of times, you know, like when I was in my in my federal tour, they would say, if you're complaining, you know what they're going to say? Well, well, kill yourself. <gasps> kill myself. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you don't always complaining. If either you're going to fix it or you're going to go ahead and die, you're going to die miserable anyway. Don't spend the rest of your life miserable. The point is not to go kill yourself. The point is do something about it. Really, really more to the point. Just shut up. If you're not going to do anything about it, I'm not going to do it for you. That it, it bothers me. I I cannot stay up. Uh, listen, complaining bothers me. I don't know what to do, other than move away from those people because they are a they are a drain on you. By the way, does Sean ever tell me why I was uh, simplistic? Let me type in Sean because I would like to know before we leave. I need to know. No, nope, ever since then he hadn't said anything. So, uh, okay, that, that, but you made a, a, you can know the one true God and still be raped, murdered, tortured, robbed, and imprisoned. So I got to do with white folks, because the person that's doing it is, is someone, most cases, someone that looks like you. And then the one that's doing it, most cases in our society, tends to be folks that have my color. So, my point is, I think Vody's point is, away with the excuses and just get moving, get to doing something. Take responsibility. And if there are people in the community that don't, that don't want to take responsibility, if there are people in the community that um, you need to move, well then move them. Get rid of this anti-snitch mentality. Deal with the problems. That way your problems won't deal with you. So uh, anyway, I thought that was a good a good uh, conversation. I would recommend that you guys go and watch the rest of this. Um, but more to the point, yo, take a stand. Be responsible. All you can do is all you can do. Well, then be responsible at home. Make sure the kids around you understand. Teach them to have a work ethic. Teach them how to be responsible at home. If, if you pull something out, put it up. That's your responsibility. Don't, don't increase my burden. Don't do that. Uh, teach them to, to if, you, if you're out in the, in the front yard and you see a piece of paper, pick it up. That that carries forward in life. If they give you an assignment in school, 
do the assignment, ask for extra credit. If you got a bill to pay, pay the bill. When should you pay it? Well, pay it before they ask for you to pay it. Don't create a lot of extra debt. If you got somebody that you think is nice and sweet and cute, don't have sex with that person. Wait till you get married, then have babies and have them do exactly what you've been doing. That's how you do that. Why? Because that's the, that's the successful ingredient that works. It's prescribed by the Bible. If you know the Lord Jesus and you don't do this, well, then something is wrong. Amen.